If you suffer from recurrent or chronic migraine of gastrointestinal symptoms that may include abdominal pain or discomfort, bloating, constipation, and or diarrhea, it may be due to a common medical condition called irritable bowel syndrome or IBS for short. Unfortunately, many people go left undiagnosed, but 10 to 15% of the population suffers from it. So could you be one of them? Today, I'm gonna to review the most common symptoms, how doctors diagnose and treat it, including the dietary recommendations to follow. Make sure to watch until the end for a special cameo appearance of my health savvy medical assistants. You don't wanna miss this. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Maj. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics and headlines. IBS often stems from a dysfunction of the gut-brain access, which means that it can be actually psychologically driven at times. There's a strong connection between our brain and our gastrointestinal system. And many, but not all IBS patients also suffer from anxiety, depression, and or report symptoms that are driven by stress or emotion. Interestingly, there's a higher prevalence in young people, in particular in those until age 30s, and also women. Although older people and men certainly do suffer from IBS as well. Now, not everyone with IBS has the same exact symptom profile and the severity can actually vary on a spectrum from mild to occasional symptoms to more severe and frequent. Problem with stooling is common and some people mostly experience diarrhea while others report a constipation predominance and, there, there are all, and then there are those who actually go back and forth between diarrhea and constipation throughout their entire lives. But almost all IBS patients report some type of abdominal discomfort which may include a sensation of bloating which is a common one that I hear. It can mimic other more concerning medical conditions however such as celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and less commonly colon cancer. However, those patients do show red flags, signs and symptoms such as rectal bleeding, unintentional weight loss, anemia, especially if it's iron deficiency anemia, which can be easily discover, discovered on just a routine blood test, and recent change in bowel function or appearance. For instance, small caliber stools. Also, symptoms that first begin at the age of 45 or higher is of particular concern because it's not that common to first start showing symptoms of IBS in this age group. It's usually earlier in life. And then we also worry more about those people with a family history of colon cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, or celiac disease as well. Now a specific test to diagnose IBS does not exist. It's really a diagnosis of what we call exclusion, which just means that we need to rule out other conditions before we can say for sure it's IBS. However, a blood test to screen for things like celiac, um, anemia, and even thyroid disorder, which can also cause changes in stooling, is useful to rule out other potential causes and should be done for most people. Now, a colonoscopy may be recommended in some people in order to rule out inflammatory bowel disease along with colon cancer in older people, especially over the age of 45, but most young, healthy people don't necessarily require a colonoscopy. Note, food allergy testing is not diagnostic and it's not useful in IBS and not routinely recommended. Unfortunately, a miracle pill to fully eradicate or cure IBS does not exist either. Treatment is really tailored based on the symptoms. So for instance, for diarrhea, over-the-counter loperamide can help alleviate the watery stool. And there is also some evidence that prescription tricyclic antidepressants, or TCAs we call them, such as amitriptyline or nortriptyline, can improve diarrhea in IBS patients as well. For those with constipation predominance, an osmotic laxative such as the over-the-counter Miralax or the generic for it would be a handy tool to have in your medicine cabinet. Now, osmotic laxatives refer to the pooling of fluid into the stool as opposed to other laxatives that are actually acting as stimulants, which often have higher side effect risk profiles. There are also several newer prescription drugs on the market for those who suffer from chronic constipation, but they are currently only available as brand, which may be costly and insurance coverage a challenge. For abdominal discomfort, what do you do for that? Well, there are some studies supporting the use of peppermint oil, interestingly, 
along with prescription tricyclic antidepressants and antispasmodics that calm the GI tract down. Now the role of fiber hasn't been entirely established in IBS. I mean, some studies report improvement and others don't. But a trial of psyllium, which is generic for Metamucil, at a starting dose of half to one tablespoon daily is a worthwhile effort. The amount of daily fiber can then be gradually increased through time in order to avoid exacerbation of symptoms with an initial large dose, because that can happen. So you need to increase it gradually. There's also some data, although not substantial, that the following treatment modalities may also help alleviate IBS symptoms. So these include things like exercise, walking, yoga, relaxation techniques. I mean, these are all free things. Also acupuncture and maybe psychotherapy, especially cognitive behavioral therapy. I mean, that's probably the one that's been studied the most for IBS. But we need more studies to substantiate their specific roles in IBS. Now let's talk about your diet. There is limited evidence that a gluten-free diet would be useful in IBS, but there is a smaller select segment of patients I've seen who truly vouch for it. Now, the hypothesis is, is that the improvement in symptoms may not necessarily be due to the gluten restriction per se, but the simultaneous removal of fructans in the same food items. Also, there's some data supporting a FODMAPS diet. This refers to a diet low in fermentable oligo, dye, and monosaccharides and polyols, which are short chain carbohydrates that are poorly absorbed and rapidly fermented and may be responsible for certain GI symptoms. These foods include ingredients such as fructose, honey, lactose, sorbitol, mannitol, and xylitol. Besides dairy though, this means that eliminating wheat, barley, garlic, onion, beets, cashews, pistachios, lentils, legumes, chickpeas, apples, pears, and various other fruits and veggies a lot of good stuff. Of course, there is nutritional value in many of these foods, and we don't recommend to eliminate them from your diet unless they actually pose a problem for you. Therefore, a trial of an elimination diet, we call it, which means eliminating all the foods on this list for six to eight weeks, and then gradually reintroducing each item back into the diet would be useful so that you don't have to give them all up if they don't all cause an issue for you. A referral to a dietitian who can help you through this process would be good. It's also useful to keep a symptom food diary, I always tell my patients, in order to discover dietary triggers such as let's say lactose contained in dairy because up to 65% of people are reportedly lactose intolerant. And a blank notebook, split the page in half. And then on the left, write down the timing of what foods you eat. And on the right side, jot down the symptoms you have and what time you experience those symptoms. Because you may find out that maybe you're sensitive to spicy foods or gas producing foods or artificial sweeteners and etc. So although time consuming, it's a very worthwhile effort in my opinion. If you can discover your specific food triggers, share it with me in the comments down below. Now a word for my health savvy medical assistants. Hi girls. Hi. Hi. What did you want to share with us today? Jokes. What kind of jokes? Poop jokes. <laughs> Poop jokes. That's so funny. Perfect. Because it's all about irritable bowel syndrome today. What? Uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. Did you know that scientists have discovered that diarrhea is hereditary? No. It runs in your genes. <laughs> hereditary. 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 Good turn. Have you have you seen the movie Constipated? No. It hasn't come out yet. Oh, that's hilarious. What did the toilet paper said to the other? I don't know what. I feel white. <laughs> Funny. Wiped or white? Huh? Wiped or white? It's wiped. Oops. <laughs> How funny! Again, cut! <clears throat> um, why did this soldier um, flush, um, refuse to flush the toilet? I don't know. What is it? It wasn't his duty. Duty! Ah, duty means poop, huh? Duty, duty, duty! Hooray!
Hereditary. Hereditary? Hereditary. Cut! I don't remember my jokes anymore. Find it useful. And share the dirty jokes. <laughs> <laughs>